Hello, and welcome to the Argyle HR Leadership Forum, Harnessing the Power of HR Technology. My name is Eric Wallace with Argyle, and it's great to have everyone joining us today. A couple of notes before I turn things over to our esteemed speaker. First, a quick reminder to stop by our sponsors' virtual booths at any time during today's event and for the following week. Our partners are committed to providing you with valuable content and a great overall experience. At any time during today's event, you can visit their virtual booths from the main agenda page, which include complimentary materials, information, and meet and greet opportunities. Throughout today's event, you'll have the opportunity to win one of several prizes, so be sure to check out the Prizes and Raffle Rules tab of the interface to see how you can earn points. To ask questions during the session, simply type into the Q&A chat, and we will address your questions at the end of the session. Now, without further delay, I'd like to introduce our speaker. Today, we're joined by Jill Westhoff, Vice President of Wellbeing Strategy and Solutions and Strategic Advisor at Alight Solutions. We're excited to have Jill with us for a thought leadership presentation called Winning with Wellbeing, What Employers Really Think and How AI Gives HR a Competitive, competitive Advantage. Welcome, Jill. Over to you. Good morning, good evening, wherever you are today. Welcome to Winning with Wellbeing. We are going to unpack what employees really think and how using AI can give HR a competitive advantage. I'm Jill Westhoff. I'm the Vice President of Strategic Solutions for Light, and I work with clients like you every day to help solve their biggest challenges when it comes to benefits. A little bit about Alight. So we have a 40 year history as a benefits administrator, and really our purpose is to power confident decisions for life. We believe that people are the single most important part of an organization and that there's a synergistic relationship between people, work and life. Simply put, healthy employees equal healthy outcomes for an organization. Let's look at the challenge that HR leaders face today. So HR leaders are faced with not only the challenge of attracting and retaining exceptional talent, because as we know, um, attrition is very expensive, but you also have the responsibility to foster an employee engagement and to deliver on a comprehensive well-being strategy. And despite the investments and effort and focus that there has been, especially in the past three years, 37% of employees with a self-ranked poor well-being say that they're likely to leave in the next year. So how do we focus? How do we help mitigate that? We'll take a deeper dive into that today. Before we do, let's look at four key insights from the employer perspective and what we know now. One, the, the well-being imperative really continues. So we know that Post-pandemic, well-being is here to stay, and we know that having healthy and productive employees ultimately helps us have a healthy bottom line. And there's been a tremendous amount of spend in this space in the past several years, and we see it to continue to grow. And that's $18 billion with, with a B. So there's no lacking for investment in this space. The second key insight is that how do you take all these resources and really provide an employee experience so that the employees have the awareness and appreciation of these benefits. The second key area there is the employee experience focus then. And 75% of CHROs are say that employee experience is a top priority. The third trend then is no surprise is that with that investment and that experience, how do we make sure that we're having the return on investment? So there is scrutiny here in making sure that there is business value for that investment. And 81% are looking for AI to help with that, driving efficiencies and that return on investment. And speaking of AI, looking at that fourth trend is that leveraging AI to transform HR is a top business priority for organizations. So there's likely not an article that you haven't read today that's around Gen AI and HR and how to leverage it. And that's no different. Whether employers increasing their budget spend, 89% plan to do so, or looking at Gen AI as a way to improve that employee experience, more than 52%, it is an insight and clearly a trend that is, is here to stay. If we switch now to the 
key employee insights. So as we just learned where you are investing and what are strategic priorities, let's think about these three trends that employees are saying from our Winning with Wellbeing Insights survey. Number one, well-being fuels retention. So we heard some of those statistics and we'll dive deeper into this, but people that rank their well-being as high are more likely to stay. So good that there's an investment there and good a direct correlation between well-being and retention. The second key trend is around trust and trust playing a vital role. Workers who trust their employers are unlikely to leave. So we'll unpack what trust looks like and how you can personalize that experience and help workers. The third key trend is around communications. They could be lacking specifically when you're communicating well-being benefits by income levels. And we'll unpack why that's important and how to take action from that perspective. So now we'll transition into unpacking each one of these trends and how different AI solutions and technologies can really help give you that competitive advantage, help solve some of these problems and drive your desired outcomes. Okay, so well, that first trend, well-being fuels retention. Let's look at the well-being ecosystem where you are making investments and think about, do you have the ecosystem that will ultimately enable those out desired outcomes? As we see here with 75%, if you have a strong well-being ranking, they will stay. So let's look at what a good well-being ecosystem can look like. And this is a light's point of view. First of all, the entire ecosystem is grounded with an employee experience platform. This gives you the ability to take what can be a very complex landscape, 20 to 50 vendors that you likely have invested in, and be able to serve up the your information at the right time at the moment that matters and make sure that it's personalized for your employees. This way too, not only can you provide activation and which is that awareness, but that ongoing engagement, make sure people utilize your benefits and programs and ultimately measure that return on investment. If we move on from the platform and think about a personalized well-being plan, what's right for me is not right for you. Employees expect that it's a highly personalized plan, especially in the digital age that we live. And that the personalized plan can be fed from a holistic solution. We now well know that well-being is just not about physical health. We know that all these components are interrelated. And someone that may be financially struggling will have stress. And stress can lead to other physical conditions. So all these components are interrelated. So we have to think about the whole needs of an individual. And while many of these solutions and capabilities can be highly digital, don't forget the high touch support. So where's they're needed, especially at moments that matter of someone having a potentially di new diagnosis or a chronic condition or a new hire that's being onboarded? How do they know what their benefits are? Are they going to go to a website and read that? Or are they going to be able to talk to you know, a licensed counselor? to be able to have support. So don't forget the high touch support. Underpinning that then is the flexibility and choice to meet the unique and diverse needs. So think about today for those of you that maybe offer some incentives or discount platforms, how do people decide what's important to them? Think about solutions like a lifestyle account, or maybe they're called a choice account or a well being marketplace. Are employees given the flexibility to decide what's important to them to meet their unique needs? Maybe someone wants a home delivery system, maybe someone wants a gym membership, meet their needs where they're at. And back to AI, underpinning all of this capability is to have the data. So Where's your payroll data sitting? Where is your employee interaction data sitting and the transactions from your HRIS systems? All of that can feed this ecosystem to ultimately make sure that it is highly personalized, and continuously updating to provide the right information at the right time. 
So again, taking a step back, think about your ecosystem. Here is a point of view on what good could look like and opportunities. Moving on to the second major trend is around trust. And trust plays a vital role, role in, in, in talent retention. So in this realm, think about how do you make employees aware of what you are providing, appreciate those, and utilize your resources to gain that trust. 88% of employees who have high trust are likely to stay. And the number one way to do that is provide them with those tools and resources, which you clearly are because you're investing. So it's really about how do you make them aware of that? Another key finding is to think about just the essential, just did I get care, did I not see care? An interesting statistic that we uncovered was when asking employees over the past 12 months, were there times where you personally did not feel well and wanted to seek medical care, but did not do so? 53% said yes. So this is daunting that many of you are providing these resources and they're not aware or they're not able to utilize them and many factors may inhibit them from doing so but this is something that we need to make sure that at least they that what we can do is make sure that they have the awareness and support to utilize their resources so let's think about how do you do that today and let's think about the employee experience think about someone that maybe starting a family. Where do they go today to find out the resources that you're providing? Are they going to the health carrier? Are they going to a friend? Are they going to Google? Are they going to an individual website around maybe you know Upright Horizons for healthcare for uh, dependent care support? Excuse me. How are they supposed to think about the financial impacts of growing and expanding a family? Just looking at this visual, it reminds us it can be a confusing landscape. And how do you help them navigate that more simply? Our point of view and solution for this is to have an HR platform that's really powered by HI excuse me, AI. <laughs> um, so if you think about the employee experience from hire to retire, when someone is onboarded is an opportunity to provide education and resources on what is available to them. And with a continued AI action framework that can serve up the right information and prioritize that information and resources for them based on what's going on in their life, you're able to make that easy and simple for, for that employee. When they have moments that matter, again, expanding, growing your family, being able to give them all in one app, a network for that high touch support if they do need to talk to somebody, the easy search and AI capability to be able to look at what resources are available at their fingertips. And then through retiree and making sure they're staying on financial track and how they're thinking about healthcare and how they're going to cover expenses. The point is here, life happens. It's not linear. How are you continuing to adjust to meet those individual needs? A, a platform ultimately helps bring that ecosystem that you've created to the individual. Serve up the digital resources and high touch support and really be holistic across health, wealth, and well-being. And part of this, and a testament to this, our survey data found that 90% of employees want a one-stop shop for health, wealth, and well-being benefits. So they're also asking for this and would like it to simplify that experience. A look behind the scenes, if you will, on how the magic happens. <clears throat> Again, no surprise, the power of AI. If we start with the left and think about the demand, this goes back to the fundamental HR data. What are you able to co collect and put into a data hub, if you will? So think about what are people searching for? What are they asking questions on? What is claims data tell you? What is point solution data tell you? 
What about different healthcare programs they're enrolled in? Customer service interactions, of course, biometric data, assessment data, leave and disability data. There's a very rich data driven ecosystem. Ultimately, feeding that data into a hub, you're able to mine it and again, serve up smart recommendations in that platform capability. Again, in a channel of choice, which continue to expand. <clears throat> such as with Microsoft Teams to meet people at the point where they're at at work for many organizations. And an output of that then is to be able to send, whether it's the high touch or digital support, making sure they do get connected to the right resource at the right time. So whether that would be a, a doctor, a nurse, again, an, an, a carrier expert point solution. The point is that make it easy for them, that we, that you know them, and it's personalized and simplified with the platform. That third and final trend is around communications, and that communications may be lacking. So think about how do you personalize the benefits experience to meet those unique needs? How are those communications being personalized? The key factor here is that where communications were thought to be insufficient was employees that earn less than $50,000. And that was 75% that they were inefficient that are at that income level. And the reason why that is very important is that someone that doesn't have the financial means is likely, to, and, in their, and if they're not aware of their benefits, they're likely to go a route towards higher um, expenses, such as using the emergency room or going without care and developing you know, chronic conditions that, of course, are more expensive to them and the employer. So this is really important demographic group to be thinking of and making sure that group more than anyone has an awareness uh, of those benefits and is able to utilize them. Speaking of having the awareness and education, only 4% of those employees that earn less than $50,000 say that they know their benefits. So they're potentially not using them or know about them. And, and again, they're saying their well-being communications are insufficient. So let's look how to address that. <clears throat> a little bit more here on this information is with looking at the entire population. The good news is only 5% don't know the basics. 18% do know the basics. 35% know just the benefits they use. So population at large besides income, there is a huge opportunity here. Okay. So options for you to think about your strategy around communication. One example of a way to provide simple personal connected is around your total rewards experience. So think about today, how do you let your employees know the value of the investment and the benefits that are available to them? So think about when you're onboarding an employee, do they understand not only just the compensation, but also what's being invested in from a health, wealth, and well-being perspective and any extra perks that may be provided? This is a good way to make sure that they have that awareness. You're starting to build that appreciation from the beginning. They have context. They have clarity. And again, we've done studies on this and see a direct correlation between providing the total wealth value your total value statements from an onboarding perspective correlated with retention and attrition, especially in that first 18 months, and even greater when it's paired with a licensed benefit counselor, so both that high-touch support. So think about how digitally you're communicating the value as well as uh, the high-touch support that may be provided here. We can take another look at, in leveraging AI, how do you provide personalized engagement campaigns? So if we think about when someone is going through a life event, such as starting a family, how do you make sure that they're aware of all the resources and programs that you have for helping to grow and build your family, as well as the actions they need to take to think about like taking a leave of absence to 
handle that life event. So we have something here uh, called program optimization. And back to the pain point that we have, where we have a potentially a disconnected ecosystem, not sure where, what programs are being utilized or what programs are available. And again, from an employer perspective, you could be missing out on potential benefits, uh, both for the employees, as well as for you, as far as lower health insurance or again, absenteeism, et cetera. So the solution here is to have AI powered personalization campaigns, and you can run those in any channel of toys. And this is a way to have program content served up, ready and delivered to your employees to know what the benefit is, how do you sign up for it? You know, what's the cost and have them ease of ease of direction and navigation, how to engage in that program. Why that all matters is the value. So for an average of 10,000 employees, just having a 1% increase in that program usage can yield a $1 million cost savings. And of course, as we've been talking about here, not only does it help drive efficiencies and productivities, because these are all automated and driven by AI, but also helps with that better experience. We'll take a deeper look at what those program optimization could look like. So an example of AI recommendations, so carry loop that could be served up as a program example for helping to support with that building and growing family. And it's very personalized content then, as well as having a one-stop shop for all the programs and benefits. So just list everything. Maybe there are multiple programs supported for building and growing a family, such as we see here with Maven or Bright Horizons. This is the opportunity to, again, let the employee decide what's important to them, what they need now, and making sure they just have an easy one-stop shop to know what all is available. And of course, at the end of the day, measuring that return. So how much engagement is that vendor actually providing? How much is the platform providing? So that you ultimately, as the investor can decide, do I keep investing in that program or how do I increase engagement in that program? What communications are working or not working? How are people responding? How does that look by different demographic groups? It really allows you to check and adjust and personalize that experience. One last example here around program optimization in action, keeping with building and caring for your family, some more examples. Again, here's a way to think about a proactive outreach. Again, leveraging that data and AI to provide emails, text messages. These could be Microsoft Team chats, but to do a proactive outreach on what programs are available. There's the opportunity to have program landing pages to make sure that they're aware of the additional support programs available to them. Again, that can be through self-service then for the employee to do their own search and find for what is right for them. The other key component is to be able to give journeys or checklists, if you will, help that employee think about that entire experience. So whether it's, you know, I need to submit a leave, so more tactical, if you will, or transactional, but as well as another way to market the programs that are available to them that might be the right time at the right moment on that journey. And then lastly, as they progress from building and caring for their family, returning to work, you know, how do they think about caring for themselves? What's needed for them? So again, having the ability to have the tools and self-service resources available to them. It's relevant, it's personal, digital communication, and leveraging the power of AI. The final piece to, re, uh, to write, remind, and reinforce, if you will, is that much of what we covered so far has been about a platform, leveraging data, delivering AI, digital communications to really bring that awareness, appreciation, and ultimately utilization of your investments. Reminder, again, don't forget the high touch support. That's really important. Whether it would be a licensed benefit counselor to help, especially a new hire, understand what their benefits are, and drive that overall initial awareness and appreciation. Or if someone wants to find a doctor or help with medical claims, leveraging a health pro, 
or if there was a diagnosis or escalated condition such as cancer, having a medical ally, a nurse or a doctor to have support. This is a holistic aspect to how to really make sure that whether it's benefits knowledge, summary plan description knowledge, healthcare utilization, program utilization, how do you make sure that for the employees, you're really still giving them a human element in this digital, in this digital work workforce that we are in? In summary, we've covered a lot today around that digital and high touch support. I'll leave you with four key takeaways. One, well being matters. And reflect and think about do you have an ecosystem that will ultimately enable your strategy and the desired outcomes that you're looking for? Two, leverage and invest in HR technologies grounded in AI. We talked about several key capabilities here today, particularly having that employee experience platform. All of that is AI driven. So how, think about are you how are you leveraging those technologies to ultimately deliver on your employee value prop? Thirdly, in that digital AI world, still remember that a human touch is, is equally as important. And how are you complementing your programs with that support. And then lastly, I would invite you to review your current state well-being ecosystem and, and employee sentiment. Determine how you can simplify and amplify your investments to really maximize your return on investment. What are your employees specifically stating and what do you need to check and adjust? With that, thank you for your time today. Please check out our Winning with Wellbeing white paper. And for any questions and needs, you can go to alight.com. Thank you so much. Thank you again for that incredible keynote. I also want to thank everyone else for joining us today. This session, along with all of today's content, will be available on demand following the event. As a reminder, please be sure to check out the prizes and raffle rules section to see how you can earn points for the chance to win one of several prizes. Our next session will start at 1.25 p.m. Eastern, and it will be a keynote presentation called Last Not Least, How to Succeed at Succession Planning. We look forward to seeing you there.